I'm going to give you my spoiler-free review of Toy Story 4, and I'll continue with my breakdown of E3 Day 3. Welcome to the newest episode of SDW. Super Dario World! It's a me, Dario! Woohoo! My back is killing me, man. Ah, it's, it's really annoying. It's really annoying. I went to the gym the other day, and uh, I was doing deadlifts, and I did one wrong. I'm sure I did one or two wrong, and it's just... Uh, now it's bothering me, and I'm supposed to do back today, so... Uh, don't do deadlifts. Those are stupid. Honestly, they're stupid. If anybody, if anybody out there knows something else I could do instead of it that would be equally as good or better, please let me know, because... Right now, this is really annoying. I don't want to go through this again. Uh, it's not fun at all. I don't recommend it. It was really annoying trying to fall asleep yesterday. I just can't. I just can't. I don't I don't like feeling like an old man who can't move because his back hurts. It sucks. But anyway, before I get into it, let me just give you a quick reminder. You can find the podcast on the iHeartRadio app. Just type in The Show Presents, Super Dario World. It'll, fo- it'll show up right there. And you can also find it on the Rock 105.3 webpage. Just type in the podcast tab. You'll find it right there. Also, SoundCloud, YouTube, and iTunes. Type in Super Dire World Podcast. It'll show up right there. Any comments, questions, or suggestions that you have for me, you can always reach out on Instagram. Just type, uh, just find me at Dario of the Show. I'm sorry, I'm still having an aneurysm. I'm still, I'm still not okay. I want the building to be done already. I want them to stop ripping off the carpets because I feel horrible. I felt horrible all week, and uh, it's just not fun for me. And you know what's the weird? You know what's the worst part? They haven't even done the carpet in my studio. Yeah, they ripped it out and all the other ones. They haven't even done it in the little one. that, I, And it's a tiny studio. It's a tiny, tiny-ass studio. And so when they do that, I'm pretty sure I'm going to die. So uh, it's been nice knowing you. If uh, for some reason my podcast does not go up one day, you'll know why. It's because I died here. Yes. Anyway, let's move on to more fun stuff. So remember, no toys get left behind. That song takes me back to the day, man. I love it. It's a great, simple little tune, but I love it. And uh, so, okay, uh, I saw Toy Story 4 yesterday. And before I get into the movie review, remember, this is going to be spoiler-free. 100% spoiler-free. Before I get into it, let me just give you a quick overview of what it's about and when it comes out. So the movie comes out on June 21st. All the original casts are returning. By that, I mean Tom Hanks, Tim Allen. Those are the two the biggest names, but also Joan Cusack, Annie Potts, everybody, everybody's back, right? Plus a few new voices that I will talk about a bit more further on the review. And uh, this is the plot for the movie straight out of IMDb. When a new toy called Forky joins Woody and the gang, a road trip alongside old and new friends reveals how big the world can be for a toy. Okay, so that's pretty much, that's a summary of the movie. That's what it's about. And, uh, Okay, so the biggest thing that everybody has been asking me, like, I'm not kidding. This is the, the biggest question that everybody has asked. <laughs> Anybody who's reached out uh, after I, because I, I did a little quick Instagram video yesterday in my Instagram stories. Again, at Dara the Show if you want to follow me. Uh, I did a quick video saying that I saw the movie, but I couldn't talk about it until the review embargo was done, which was today at 9 a.m. So uh, most of the people who reached, because not everybody, but most of the people who reached out, they all had the same question. Did you cry? 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 And I'll get into all that. But first, I want to talk about my biggest concern going into this movie. My biggest concern going into this movie was that the ending for the third one was perfect. They found a way to close out the series in a way that I thought it was perfect. It wrapped up neatly. It was phenomenal. I mean, who can forget? Who can forget Andy sitting in his car, looking back at his toys that are being held by Bonnie. That's the new girl. He's looking fondly at them, and he says, Thanks, guys. And he drives away. And as he's driving away, Woody looks back at him, and he says, So long, partner. Good. Ah, beautiful. It's so beautiful. Ah, I'm choked up. I'm getting choked up. Anyway, yeah, so it was a perfect way of ending it. I thought, no more. That's it. You're done. That's it. It was perfect. You don't need to add anything more. You're just going to ruin it. So when I heard that they were making Toy Story 4, I was like, no, don't stop it. You don't need it. You are done. You, 
you had your swan song. It was perfect. It was done. I, I was already worried. I was worried when they when they announced Toy Story three because I was like, what are they going to add to it? They don't need to add anything, but they did. Wrapped it up perfectly, or at least I thought it was perfect, and and I was happy. And then they announced Toy Story four, and I'm like, no, 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 no. I legit got choked up just remembering. I'm oh, stupid phone. Again, brain aneurysm. I'm sorry. I got choked up legit just reliving that scene. The so long, partner. Like, son of a bitch. Why are toys doing this to me? Anyway, so they didn't need anything more. It was perfect. Sometimes you just need to let things be. You don't need to try to do it again. You don't need to add to it. You don't need to add to it. It was done. So I was. I went to see the movie concerned. I was legitimately concerned. I saw only one trailer because I only try to watch one trailer because I feel like trailers now just ruin movies. So I only try to watch one, and that's the first one, the announcement, the teaser one, and then I, I stay away from trailers as much as I can. So I saw the first one, and I was like, uh, I don't know, I'm concerned. Well, I am happy to announce that I walked out of the theater thinking, okay, they didn't ruin it. Okay? So... <laughs> For those of you who are as concerned as I was, they did not ruin the ending of the third one. This one is a nice little wrap to the story. But the thing is that I don't even know if they're going to wrap it up. Like, I don't even know. It, cause they keep doing this to me. But yeah, it, it was a nice, it, it's a nice little wrap up. I don't know if it's, it's a very different type of emotional. The movie has a lot of heart. I, I need to start off with that. The movie has a lot of heart. It stays on par with the franchise with having a lot of heart. But I, it's a different type of emotion because the stakes for this movie are way lower than in the other ones. And let me just explain that real quickly. In the first one, uh, do you guys remember Andy and his family? They're moving away. So when Woody gets lost, it means that he could lose Andy forever, right? That's pretty much what it means. Uh, on the second one, Aunt Woody is going to be sent to freaking where? Japan because he got stolen by a collector. And so, again, that means losing Andy and all of his friends forever. Uh, the third one is either losing all of his friends or losing Andy to college. That's kind of pretty much it. That's the thing. So the stakes are really high. And so this movie starts after he's already lost Andy forever. So we get to see Woody dealing with the consequences of it. You know, before, in, in Toy Story 3, the ending is really strong. Most of the movie throughout, it, it goes up and down. But the ending is really strong. It's really sad. Because, you know, he loses Andy. This one, we get to see Woody dealing with that afterwards. And he's doing it in a very weird way. And But you know what's happening. Because we're human and we're slightly smarter than they are. Slightly smarter than toys. And so you you feel really bad for him. As you see him go through his grief. And, you know, trying to find his new place in this new world. It's, it's really sad. And that's a feeling that's carried out throughout the movie. You know, it's called subtext. And uh, it's... That's the thing that makes it different. It's not a big buildup. It's a continuing feeling of, dis- not despair, but of, of heartache. Yes, it's a continuum. It's a continuous feeling of heartache. And you, you feel for Woody. You feel really bad. And uh, I went to see it with a friend of mine who's a dad. And he was saying, like, dude, I'm, I'm such a dad. I was tearing up because it reminded me of probably of, of things that you're going to feel when your kids leave your nest, right? Like, uh, you're longing for purpose. And that's the big theme of this movie. The big question is, what's more important, purpose or happiness? Do you follow your duty? Do you follow your heart? Can you have happiness without purpose? Are you following what really will make you happy? Can you be selfish when people depend on you? There's a lot of very deep philosophical questions in it. It can be very conflicting. And the movie starts off with a bang. Like, it starts off really strong. If you guys remember... Uh, Bo, Bo Peep, that, that was the character, the girl with the sheeps, Woody's somewhat love interest. She does not appear in Toy Story 3. So I, honestly, the fact that she did not appear in Toy Story 3 makes me think that they kind of planned this from the beginning. But I might be wrong. I might be giving them more credit than they deserve. However, it is Pixar and it is Disney. And what they've done with Toy Story has been fantastic so far. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. And, uh, so it starts with a little bit of a flashback of what happens to Bo Peep. And, uh, that scene is very, very powerful. It's very strong. So the movie starts off with a bang, and it doesn't really let off. It just keeps it keeps it there. Sometimes up, sometimes down, but it keeps it there. And uh, that actually makes it for the most, let's say, human portrayal of Woody. Because before, it's always been kind of like a toy. This one, it was actually very, very human the way that he was played or the way that the story developed. Because it's not just a kid 
you know, him trying to get back to his kid. It's him trying to find a purpose in life, which is something that we can all relate to. I mean, right? Before, you see it as a toy trying to get back to the kid that he loves. Now it's a person trying to find happiness, trying to find purpose, trying to find love, trying to find something. So it's the most human version of Woody. And so that gives for a different narrative. And it sets Woody apart from everybody else. And I know I've been talking a lot about Woody, but he is the main character of the series. I don't care what anybody says. He's always been the main character of the series. The story has always followed Woody, okay? Think about it. Back to the first movie, it's what happens to Woody after Buzz shows up. So Woody had his life. It gets changed by Buzz when he gets there, there, and he's trying to get back to Andy, trying to bring all of them back together to Andy. The second one, Woody's being sent to freaking Japan because he got stolen. The third one, Woody wants to keep his friends together with Andy. So the main character has always been Woody. That's why I'm focusing on him so much. And that's honestly the story that I cared about the most. If they wrapped up, because they already wrapped up his story so well, they needed to make his story make sense for this one in order for it to be like, okay, they needed to make Toy Story 4. And it did. It does. His story's great. Like I said, the most human version of Woody we've ever seen. And he's always been kind of a romantic. From the very first movie they did, insinuate that he had a relationship with Bo and but in this one they just actually explored it which was phenomenal honestly I, I loved it I loved the way they handled Woody's story everybody else was pretty much the same they did their own thing it was it was funny in their own way it was it was great to see them have their own little adventure it was great but like I said Woody is set apart in this movie because of his internal journey Anyway, the rest of the cast is phenomenal, particularly the new characters. I really enjoyed the new characters. Uh, one was, was voiced by Keanu Reeves, another by Christina Hendricks. But the best ones, honestly, the best new characters are voiced by Key and Peele. <laughs> Key and Michael Key and uh, Jordan Peele. Those two characters are hysterical. I love them. It's a, it's, a, it's a stuffed bunny and a little ducky. They are, honestly, they're my favorite part of the movie, comedy-wise. They are phenomenal. And it's no surprise. I mean, they're Key and Peele. They're comedy veterans. In fact, if they wrote some of their jokes, I would not be surprised. It, it would just make too much sense. If I had those two guys in the room, I would ask them to write their own stuff. Or let's say, like, oh, what would you think should be good here? I don't know. That's what I do. I take advantage of their talents. Anyway, but uh, the new character, the biggest one, the most important one, was Forky. Now, Forky is voiced by Tony Hell, who you might remember from Arrested Development. He plays Buster. Buster Bluth. Anyway... Forky, I I heard this from Emily. Uh, Emily, who's also a member of the show that I work on, Rock 105.3's morning show, the show in San Diego. Anyway, Emily said that she loved Forky. Forky was fantastic. To me, I found him to be a little annoying, but that was kind of the point. At first, he has to be annoying. Then he grows on you. And again, that was kind of pretty much the point of the character. So he did a really good job. Tony Hale, props to you, man. You were very annoying, and then you were very likable. Ask Forky. So if you're following me so far, new characters, great, really funny, really likable. Uh, Old characters, great. The main character, phenomenal. Uh, The animation for this movie is the best in the series, which makes sense. I mean, the first one came out in 1995. That's over 20 years ago. So they've gotten progressively better almost 25 years ago. Yeah. So they've gotten progressively better. This is the best one by far. It's the best looking movie. Um Like I said, it's not the one with the biggest stakes. It's kind of the one with the lowest stakes, but in the best way possible because they focus on the human aspect of it, the really, the emotional part, the soul of it, you know, the soul. Anyway, so I highly recommend the movie. I highly enjoyed it. It was fantastic. It was, I did not walk out of there thinking, oh, they should not have done it. I walked out out of there thinking like, it's great. I'm very happy that they did this. For the future of the franchise, I have my thoughts on it, but I'm not going to say because it might give you a spoiler one way or the other, but I do have thoughts on it. I will I will bring it up one point or another eventually, but overall, extremely good movie. Is it the best one or where would I rank it? It's really hard. It's really hard to to rank the Toy Story movies because, I, I and I've said this, I love Toy Story 1, but the animation is clearly dated, but... If the first one had the level of animation of this one, then it would easily be the best one. I don't know. It's it's hard to rank it. I need to watch it again because right now I'm giving you my emotional response, and it did hit you. It does hit you. It did hit me. Like uh, honestly, I did I did tear up in multiple pot, multiple spots, it, particularly the beginning. To me, the beginning was was just like the strongest hit. But mm, let me think. No, you know I'm, I'm not gonna I'm gonna rank it. I'm not gonna rank it yet. I can't. It's too difficult, and I need to see it again because. 
I don't care how many times I watch Toy Story 3, the ending still gets to me. And uh, by the way, uh, to me, I don't really care when they're about to be burned alive. I don't, that doesn't really affect me at all. To me, the moment that affected me the most was when Bonnie was taking all the all the toys and uh, and, and Andy had Woody in his hands. And so Bonnie reaches out for Woody and uh, Andy pulls back. He's like, Ugh, he still wants to keep Woody. Uh, the feels. So that's the moment that that got me the most. I, I didn't care about the being burned thing. I cared about that. That and he still wants him. Oh my god, he needs his toy. Anyway, so really great. Oh, oh, one one minor knock on this movie. It's not really a knock. It's just a personal thing. Uh, and that's that. Bonnie does not match up against Andy. That's the way, my one knock on her. And she's a cute kid. She's adorable. She's fun. It, you, you relate to her on many ways. She's an introvert. But the problem is that she's an introvert while Andy's an extrovert. And I don't care what anybody says. Extroverts are a lot more fun to watch on screen than an introvert. You may at the end feel the same way about each, but one's clearly more fun to watch on screen. Also, again, the main character is Woody. Woody was Andy's favorite, and Woody really cared about Andy. Therefore, the audience, who's looking at the world through Woody's eyes, basically, really cares for Andy. This one is a little bit different because he's a little bit more reserved because he's been heartbroken poor little woody he's been heartbroken and so you don't you don't see bonnie in the same way you see her as uh almost like a consolation prize which is not really fair but i cannot help but feel it like i can't tell you how many times throughout the movie i was like ugh, this kid's no andy and (laughs) if i was feeling it i'm assuming that that's what like woody was feeling so again not really fair but you can't help but compare people you just can't all right anyway so overall Great movie. And again, it's not really a knock on the movie. I know that it's, it's a part of the theme, okay? It's it's a part of it. And so if it was a part of it, then it was well done. It's just kind of not not annoying. It's not, it's not the word that I'm looking for. It's um, something that you wish you could change. But, ah, okay. Okay, I'm getting close to it. Because it is part of it. Like, the desire to want to change somebody is a theme in the movie or wishing that they were somebody else or wishing that you were somebody else in that situation. It's a part of the theme. Oh, okay. Damn, it might have been done on purpose. So kudos to you, per- Pixar. Uh, wow. I just figured that out, I think. Or at least I think I'm figuring it out. So that's good on you, man. It gets you. The movie gets you. It's it's really deep. Like I said, philosophically deep. It has a lot of heart. But load of heart. And uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Like I said, it gets to you. That's the biggest thing, honestly. If you walk out of there feeling like you, ah, it pulled on your heartstrings. So I highly recommend it. Highly enjoyable. And I don't think it's been a while since I've seen a movie that actually pulled on me that hard. Because it, it pulls on your heart. Like I said, it sounds really weird to say it. But yeah, it uh, it makes you feel stuff. I I wish I could break it down a little bit more. But that's it. That That's it for today. That is my spoiler-free review of the movie. I highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. It's... It felt really short to me. It's like an hour and 40 minutes long, and I thought like, oh, my God, I, they made it really short. I looked into it, and apparently this is one of the longer ones. <laughs> yeah, like Toy Story 3 was 142. The original Toy Story was like a minute 20-something. So it's it, it, it goes by quick, man. It goes by just like life. Life goes on quick, man. Anyway, so that's it. I'm not even going to get into E3 stuff today. Well, you know what? I'll do it. I'll do it really quickly because there's not much to do. Well, the biggest thing from E3 is that, and I missed this, it happened a few days ago, but I, it, get, it gets lost in the shuffle. Uh, THQ announced that they're going to do a SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom rehydrated version, so they're going to do a remake of that game. And it's coming out in the near future. It's a platformer, and apparently it's like a cult classic now. People love that game. My kid brother had it. I, I thought it was fine. It was fun. But they're remaking it, and it should be coming out in the near future. They didn't specify when. And uh, I missed some stuff from Ubisoft. Ubisoft uh, released a trailer for Watch Dogs Legion, which will be coming out on March 6th, 2020. This is an action adventure game where you can just be hacking all, hacking into things and you're kind of an anarchist. Anyway, this one takes place in the near future in London. And the thing for this one is that you can play as anyone. I mean, as long as you recruit somebody, then you can play as the character you've recruited. And it could be literally anybody in that world. So... That's that's a pretty ambitious project, man. I have no idea how they're going to do it. I've never played a Watch Dogs game, but I've heard great things. Well, I've, I've heard good things and bad things, but this one I'll, I'll probably check out a little bit more once the gameplay stuff has been released. 
They also announced a new title called Gods and Monsters, which will be released February 25th, 2020. Also an action adventure game. This is from the creators of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So I'm I'm guessing it's going to be pretty much Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but more with uh, slightly more cartoonish aesthetics. And supposedly the story is of a hero on a quest to save the gods. So that should be fun. I don't see why the gods need saving, but I'm guessing it has to do with Titans. But then why would they say monsters and not Titans? Maybe the title was already owned by somebody else. Anyway, they also showed a tailor for uh, blah, 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 a tailor. Jesus Christ! Honestly, ugh, allergies. I hate it. My my brain is not in full function. It was, there's too much emotion right now and too much allergies going on. I'm dying. I'm dying on the inside and out. Anyway, they showed a trailer for Rainbow Six Quarantine, which is a squad based tactical shooter with up to three players at a time, meaning that you can pass the game with up to three play with up to two friends. However, this does not mean split screen. So if you do more split screen stuff. Anyway, it kind of makes the franchise look like a horror game, quarantine, and you're fighting enemies that don't really look human. So that it might be like a zombie thing or a demon thing. I don't know. Seems interesting. Uh, this one was I, I thought was really really interesting. Uh, one of the actors and producers of the TV show It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, Rob McElhenney. I'm pretty sure that's not how you say his name. Anyway, he plays Mac in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which is one of the best comedies out there. The show's fucking hysterical it's genius it's super dark comedy i love it i highly recommend it it's always sunny in philadelphia i've tried to make them the the crew here uh, the members of the show that i work on in the morning show watch that show they i don't know why they haven't they they are a lot like them and i don't know why they haven't seen the show it's hysterical anyway i highly recommend it so this guy came out and he said that him along with other producers of the show like charlie day who who is also a star on the show got together, and the, they decided to create a, a TV show based on game developers. So the plot is that the the biggest MMORPG of all time is about to show... It's about to release its its newest expansion or its first expansion, and so it's a, the story of the team who has developed that game. Uh, the show is going to be called Mythic Quest Ban- uh, Raven's Banquet, so I look forward to that. It looks pretty interesting. They didn't show much. They just sold a, a quick teaser but it was funny enough. Um, what's his name? Abed from uh, from Community is in there. So I like him. Should be fun to watch. Also, another big thing that happened. John Bernthal. Actor John Bernthal made an appearance for Ubisoft because he's playing one of the characters in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Breakpoint, I'm sorry. Which, by the way, comes out November 4th, 2019. So John Bernthal, you may remember him from The Punisher or he played Shane in The Walking Dead. And this was one of the biggest moments from E3, apparently. Because the thing that made news is that John Bernthal walked out of there with his dog. So he walked on stage with his pit bull and, <laughs> and everybody went nuts. The dog didn't do anything. He was just standing there while John talked <laughs> and everybody went nuts. He was just, I mean, I love dogs, but come on. <laughs> the dog didn't do anything. I, I, at least you should have put a sign on the dog or something. Just take advantage of the dog. Anyway, but it's still, you know, it's fun to watch. And uh, John Berthold is a great actor. I like his work. So, yeah, Ghost Recon Breakpoint coming out November 4th, 2019. And finally, I also missed this from from the Switch yesterday. They showed the trailer for No More Heroes uh, 3, No More Heroes 3, which will be released in 2020. Uh, this will be a Switch exclusive, and basically it's an action hack and slasher. It's pretty much it. It's, it's the Switch's hack and slasher, pretty much. So... That's it. That's all the things that I'd missed from E3 so far. Hopefully you like that. Hopefully you liked my review of Toy Story 4. I don't think I did any spoilers. I'm pretty sure I didn't. Uh, again, sum it up. I highly recommend it. It is worthy of the franchise. They did not ruin it in any way. They expanded it in the best way possible. Great. Great direction. I loved it. It was great. Fantastic. Highly recommend it. Uh, any thoughts or if you have any more questions for me you can always find me at Dario of the Show comments, questions, suggestions on Instagram at Dario of the Show and I am done for today because I am dying from my head is killing me, my back is killing me allergies are killing me and emotionally I am drained so thank you for listening and I'll see you again tomorrow